there. So from 17, once again, this is my Darksiders 2 Apocalyptic Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the second last section of heaven, or this, this celestial palace that we're in, this, this lovely lost light place. And this is probably the most sophisticated and complex puzzle on the game. It involves using different versions of death to to turn these cranks, to, to use the portal gun. It's 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 a pretty tricky ensemble of demanding things. And this is gonna be one of those moments where you're really gonna to have to pay attention to the video if you're gonna get the maximum, you know, benefit from it. Because I can't tell you what I'm doing in the video because it doesn't really correlate enough. Just know that I, I have a plan and by the end of this you will be able to get past this section. And yeah, it's it's not easy, so take your time and just, you know, get all those synapses firing, get your cognition as, as sharp as it can be. And I and I think you'll have no problems whatsoever. But Anybody that's been listening to this chain of videos, we're in the same session where I'm celebrating 8,000 subscribers and I've got the chat on Twitch up at the side of me who are integrating into the content, giving me questions, suggestions, statements, all that kind of good stuff and I'm going to incorporate it into the commentary so we can have a more immersive experience. Some people are going to like this, some people are going to hate this, you know, it is what it is folks and yeah, here we go. Well, at this, po this moment in time, apparently the questions have run dry, so we'll, we'll continue with, with gameplay commentary at this moment. Uh, we're coming to the end of, of Darksiders 2. There's, once we finish this area up, we're going to be going back to, I think it's the Crowfather, doing a couple of interactions with him, and then finally getting to the, the penultimate moment, the finale, the, the moment everybody's been waiting for, to find out if death will, will salvage war and the, the horsemen will reunite. Because I do think the the end of Darksiders 1 is the biggest fuck you to Darksiders 2 they could have made. That game ended so well, it set it up so much, so epically for a sequel, and then the sequel came along, and it did a South Park when you were about to find out who Cartman's dad was, and it showed you that random Canadian episode with Celine Dion. And it, it was a joke, because they're hilarious, but at the same time, it pissed so many people off. It was... It was amazing, it really was. <laughs> but Macross has a follow-up question to a question he asked earlier, which was, would I eat my children if I was in a really bad situation? And I said I would, because I'm selfish and I don't have any, so at the moment I'm eating hypothetical children, which aren't very filling, but they definitely go down smoothly. So he's asking, how would I eat them? Would I grill them or would I fry them? So y you've got to kill them. That's, that's all you can do. And I know it's, if you've got children, this is probably going to really offend some people who, who can't take the, the novelty of what this question is. But I would perhaps make them go to bed and give them uh, an overdose of something. Uh, the least, you know, the most painless way to die, if there even one exists. Like, if, if in this weird future where I had to eat a child, I also had the ability to grant wishes, I would grant a peaceful death to the, to the child so that it you know, it passed away all nice and that, and then I'd probably just, I don't know, get a big spit and a big fire, because it's obviously in the future where we don't have sophisticated ways of cooking people, and I'd just, I'd just do it that way. And as awful and as teary-eyed as I'd be, I'd, I'd just, you know, we're doing it to survive. I'm, the, I'm the only human being on the left alive who has the knowledge to create the cure to bring back the human race, and I had to sacrifice my child, you know, similar to a, a biblical situation, to get that done. So. Yeah, KFC children is what I do. But it's still, it's a tough thing, guys, you know. It's a tough thing. You've got to be really twisted to be able to do something like that. Even hypothetically, really. So, Kamikaze Shogun asks, when is Half-Life 3 going to be released? Uh, I think it's going to come the same time when the spaceship does to pick up all those idiots on that mountain in France. So hold your breath, and uh, you'll probably die, and the world will get lighter. But yeah, Half-Life 3 is not coming, guys. It's going to take forever. And when it does come, it's probably going to be a massive letdown. So yeah, yeah, my pizza's in a minute. I can tell, guys. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it, keeping keeping my focus. So what are your thoughts on the seemingly arrogant response by creative director of the 720? I think that guy is a dick, and I'm glad he got fired. But at the same time, I look at it like this. If he was, you know, intelligent and professional enough 
to not share that kind of opinion on Twitter, which is a social media, when he is essentially one of the main spokesmen for the new console, he would not have got fired and he would not have been in that position. That guy's problem was not his opinion, because his opinion was valid, it was it was his perspective. His, his problem came when he was a dick about it publicly, when he's a spokesman for a company that is about to announce something, and his, his tweets, which blew up all over the media, IGN, game trailers, everybody picked them up, as soon as those tweets went blew up, boom, you're affecting potential sales of a console that's not even come out, and you are working for a massive machine of a corporation that is Microsoft, and I'm sorry guys, but they will not have that, so see you later job, see you later sanity, that guy, big mistake. But, that just goes to show guys, that when you work for a big company, you should probably censor your Twitter just a little bit better, and you might keep your career. But we're still... Deep in Darksiders 2, still deep in this puzzle, balls deep in this, and uh, there's only another five minutes left of the video, so if you are struggling with this section, you should have the faith that you will get past it, and you're only five minutes away from, you know, never seeing it again, which is always uh, an uplifting feeling. But, taking it back over to the chat once again, we've got somebody who, who's not a big fan of the Four Kings in New Game Plus, which is a sentiment I think everybody can share. Because the, the Kings are an intimidating boss fight. And until you learn to either dodge them or you get comfortable with tanking them, make sure you bring 20 flasks because it can be a long fight. But this should give you some faith if you're having trouble with them. There's a channel called Gamefront. They, there's also got Gamefront walkthroughs at this moment. I would love to work for that channel. I would love to be part of that community because they're amazing. It must be such a cool job going to work in that office and being with those guys making YouTube videos. I think it's probably one of the most fun things you could do. There's a guy there called James Heaney who's been having a lot of trouble with Dark Souls thanks to his inability to create memory for some reason. He's played the game before, he's doing a New Game Plus playthrough, he's got all the way up to the end and he's just beaten Gwyn in New Game Plus and it takes James quite a long time to do some things because he, he just he chokes and he forgets what he's doing and he forgets how to play and he panics and he heals at bad times and he does a lot of things that people consider not to be the point. But that's how he plays and he, he's got through it through sheer determination, which is awesome. And if James can do it in his way, in his unique way, his expert guide way of doing it, you should be able to do it too. And <laughs> it is pretty funny stuff. But Bloody Mess asks, are you interested in Demon Souls? I have two challenge runs in mind. Uh, I'm not very good at Demon Souls, is the truth of that game. I, I don't play it so well. I've done two, three standard playthroughs. Two of them were just standard. And two of them were standard, as I just said. Uh, one of them was a hiltless playthrough where I essentially got the hiltless in, is it 4-1 or whatever it's called, in the, the big gusty windy place with its rolling skeleton wankers. Uh, I got the hiltless as quick as I could and then I went back through and just played with that weapon which made King Alant extremely interesting to fight because I did not learn his pattern or anything. And then I've gone back through Soul Level 1 playing it and... I think Demon Souls is harder than Dark Souls for a lot of reasons, but Soul Level 1 has not been giving me too much problem and I've just got to the Flame Lurker because I ended up doing the Shrine of Storms and then coming back and the Flame Lurker is such a cheap boss. Nothing should be able to knock you down and then hit you when you're down. I don't get it. It's just weird. And that's the one difference between Dark Souls and Demon Souls that's just insane. The fact you can beat dudes up on the floor. It's just nuts. But I'm going to be doing a, a playthrough of that game and perhaps a walkthrough if it gets, you know, if it gets success. Hydrogen asks, have you seen Imaril's Soul Level 1 uh, New Game Plus 7 Pure Black World Tendency run of demons? Uh, to my answer of that, I haven't, but I have seen... Uh, a guy called the Urban Orb do it, and it's... The, the things you've got to bear in mind with this is, when you've got your Black World tendency, the, the Black Phantoms that turn up are so much stronger than everything else in the level. 
it makes everything different. You have smaller life. You have there's a lot of effects that tendency has on that world. So to do that in new game plus seven, where at soul level one you're going to be insta killed by everything anyway, it it makes for a very interesting challenge. And do you know the things that would stop me from doing it? Is the run back to King Alant and that goddamn elevator? Because there is nothing worse than that damn elevator that goes up to his room. Like, not only do you... You'd have to kill the dragons, or the dragons would just be there all the time, and getting past the dragons is a is a work of art. It's it's not easy at all, but that... Just going from the start of Boletarian Castle, or whatever it's called, all the way through all the shit, the bloody laughing general guys, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. But DFA just asked, what's worse, Resident Evil 6 or Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City? Uh, I would gladly say Resident Evil 6. Raccoon City was a bad game made palatable by the fact that it kind of worked. Resident Evil 6 just didn't work. And not only that, it was a numbered Resident Evil, so it had all the funding, all the budget, all the, the creatives working on it. And what did we get? A pile of shit game, which is completely inexcusable. But this is the end of this video, guys. The next one is going to be the boss fight with the scribe. So I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed the tangents. And you take care now.